It's been a long process for sure. Um, you know, I think Sunday, obviously, I didn't feel good. Monday, I didn't feel great. But, um, you know, it was hard for me to, like, identify what was really going on. Because uh, typically Mondays after a race, when it's that hot, you know, you kind of feel bad anyway, dehydrated or whatever. Tuesday, I felt great. Um, I made, like, three laps in a sprint car on Tuesday just for a, an ally deal. And I felt great through all that. felt totally normal. Wednesday, I had, like, a crazy busy day. And by the end of the day, I was feeling pretty bad. And... Uh, felt really bad in front of screens and stuff like that. So that's when I kind of identified what was going on and, and went to see the doctors and, and went from there. But, um, you know, the recovery was definitely different from, I guess, what I would have assumed for uh, concussions. Just, um, you know, I got back into my regular routine of training pretty quickly and just added things um, for my ocular and vestibular systems just to try to catch them back up. So um, it was a long process and uh, a couple flights back and forth to, to Pittsburgh to see the guys up there. But um, everybody was super helpful. Uh, I, I got more text messages and advice than I knew what, what to do with, honestly. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's I feel 100%. Um, I've been training harder than ever for the last couple of weeks, honestly. So probably in a better spot than I was before I crashed. But, um, yeah, really excited to get back. We'll stay up front and go to Bob. Um, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. After the – I have two kind of two parts. First, do, you, do they know – was it just the Texas wreck – that causes or were there any previous wrecks and then you know some of the in-car camera shows you rubbing your eyes a lot after that is there any part of you that looks back now and said man I should have stopped racing on that day um so yeah I don't feel like I've really had any big hits this year um so I would say just the Texas crash and um yeah looking back I mean it was a tough situation uh I'm in the middle of the playoffs right and um I'm not a doctor. Did I just get my bell rung? Do I have a concussion? Like, I, I don't know what's going on or what that feels like. So, um, you know, I don't think it really, I don't think it hurt me more. I'm glad that nothing else happened throughout the rest of the day, obviously. Right. And, um, and it all ended up being okay, but yeah, it, uh, it's a bummer. I think that's just part of the next gen car. It's so tough, right? The car wasn't very damaged at all. So we're able to keep going. Um, and honestly keep going at, at a speed that uh, we could have been okay if we weren't a bunch of laps down. Go to Bruce and then Mark. Was the biggest issue you were seeing was like the lag and where you might see something and then when your brain might react to it? Because for somebody who hasn't really experienced concussions, you know, what, are, what was the one symptom that really took the longest uh, to heal from? Yeah, it wasn't that at all. Um, you know, I... I feel like uh, all the concussion symptoms that I would have, you know, heard of uh, throughout my career, heard people talk about like the nausea and stuff like that. I didn't have any of. Um, I just had a lot of pressure um, in my eyes, almost like, you know, when your sinuses are plugged up or whatever, and you kind of get that that sinus headache and that pressure behind your eyes. And I would get that um, from workouts or or from any activities that I was I was busy. Uh, so that was the biggest thing that took a while. And, um, you know, I think from what the doctors said, I think, you know, obviously the concussion kind of hurts the weakest points of, of your body. So, um, you know, I had some vision stuff going on that, that I don't think I really knew was like, my vision's not weak, but, um, it just kind of like Mickey, the doctor, uh, Mickey Collins, he says concussions fight dirty. So uh, it went for uh, a weak point with me and um, and messed with my ocular system. And I think that was the, the thing that took the longest to, to recover from. No I mean, it created headaches, but it was because of my eyes. Yeah. Go to Mark. Mark Carroll, PRN. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Uh, what was the toughest part to deal with through the recovery part uh, or the most frustrating part of the process for you? Uh, watching somebody else drive the 48 car on Sundays. That's that's not fun uh, by any means. It was it was really interesting, honestly. Um, you know, I think the f 
at first you kind of feel not forgotten about, but it's just weird not going to the racetrack. All I've ever known is racing. So when you're, when you're not going and, um, having to do different things on a weekend is just weird. Like driving around and realizing that people, that there are people in the world that don't know there's a NASCAR race going on. I think that was a, a weird thing for me. I'm at the grocery store and I'm like, man, none of these people know that there's a, a race going on right now. So, um, it was just a really, that, that part of it was weird. Weekends were weird. It's really weird being here today, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think seeing somebody else drive <clears throat> was was definitely the the least fun part. Go for it to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Hey, um, Alex, a couple things. When you went to go see the doctor, and I think you kind of talked about you kind of had some feelings of, of, of things after workouts. Did you? I mean, did you, were you almost going just to because you thought there was just a a normal issue i mean or are you more concerned like hey there's something else a little bit more or were you like shocked when they come back came back and said hey you're in concussion and you can't be in the car um i mean i think i i knew that there was a possibility of that right like i knew what i felt when i crashed at texas um but the weird thing was and like the the weird thing about concussion timelines is is they're never really the same and uh, by Tuesday, I was 100. I felt 100, percent and I felt totally fine. So, um, you know, Wednesday, when it kind of hit me by the end of the day that I was hurting and, and having that that pain in my eyes that that turned into a headache, um, that was, you know, in my head, I'm like, that's not normal. Um, you know, I had I had talked to some others that have, had been through similar things and. Um, kind of gathered the similarities were there so i i knew when i went to the doctor that it was a possibility um and yeah they they definitely identified it pretty quickly so where will you be for the race today are you staying or why are you even here if if, if weekends are, are difficult in the sense of to be to i'm be here to talk to you guys um yeah i don't know i it's gonna be super weird for me right like i'm not uh it's not an easy thing to to be here and not be in the race car but um, I'll probably watch from the pit box and hang out with the guys. It, it's cool to be back around the team. And, and I've been around the team throughout the week. I've still been going to all the meetings and hanging out, um, chewing Noah out when he brings Big Macs to the team meeting on Monday morning. So um, we're working on it. But uh, it's, um, yeah, it, it's been good to stay plugged in with the race team and to be back at the racetrack today and um, kind of see the support from the fans and everything has been really cool. So appreciative for the the warm welcome and uh yeah i'll just be hanging out today i guess i don't i don't really know it's it's gonna be weird no we have several down here we'll go to the press box though for a question if there is any nothing from the press box we'll stay down here to al and then we'll go to lee yeah. oh. al pearson motor week if phoenix were not the last race and if Phoenix were not your hometown, would you be doing this or would you just wait until February? Yeah, I think for me, um, having a goal to get back to was important um, as far as how hard I've had to work to get to this point. Uh, it was pretty difficult. I mean, it was 6 a.m. workouts every day followed by n another 9 a.m. workout every day. Um, you know, I've I've worked really hard, and if I I think if I didn't have the possibility to get back this year, it would have been easier to kind of push those things off and and not work as hard. But um, on top of that, the doctors have said that I'm 100% right. So um, I think if there was any hesitation there, it would be different. But there was a lot of motivation to get back for a Phoenix race. Um, you know, my last race with Greg as a crew chief, I didn't want to go out how Texas went with Greg, um, you know, and, and I don't want to sit all off season questioning it, right? Like I, I want to get back in the race car. So when the doctor said I was a hundred percent, um, you know, I, I trust them. I'm going off of what they say. And, um, I don't think there was any hesitation there and, and they said, I'm good to go. Go to Lee. 
I, I got to tell you, when we heard the radio exchange in Texas, you know, initially as it was happening, and you, I mean, it was absolutely chilling to hear you say, I've never taken a hit so hard like this in my life. And you have a lot to base that on, you know, having, I mean, I'm not saying I've you crashed some stuff. Time, but yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, all the different things that you drove on, what, what did you base that on? And, and did you know, immediately and was there any sense that maybe i need to get out of the car now um or was it not did it not seem that dire at the time um yeah i mean that's a hard question right like it's the middle of the playoffs you're you're going for every last point um so yeah i mean the, the thing i based it on when i said that was just how it felt like it um just felt solid you know um which i mean we've all gathered that in the last couple of weeks but um yeah just it was hard and and the way my head hit the headrest was was definitely violent um but i don't know as far as i mean yes the right decision would have been to pull over and get out of the car and quit but like you get any other of the 35 other guys that do this every sunday to do that it's just it's di it's a difficult decision and um you know, I still drove the race car and, and felt like I did a fine job of driving the race car for the rest of the day. So, um, you know, it's just uh, part of what we do. When the car's not torn up, you're you're going to keep going. Yeah, some of your competitors said that the adrenaline, it probably kept you going and, you know, would kind of override whatever sense that you had of getting out of the car. But later that week, you got in a sprint car with Jimmy, correct? Yeah, I ran a couple laps on Tuesday, and like I said, it, the I so how I felt on Monday, I wasn't planning on running, and then Tuesday I was 100%, and I felt uh, I felt totally fine through that whole thing, and I really just fired it off to warm the engine, and I ran like two laps or three laps um, just to make sure it was good for him. But um, yeah, I felt 100% through that experience. It was honestly, um, you know, meetings I had the the good old NASCAR DEP media assignment where you, you go through, you know, an hour, hour and a half of call-ins and then um, had some team stuff that I was doing throughout the day on, on Wednesday that by the end of that, I just felt terrible. Um, so, you know, it had nothing to do with, with Tuesday. I felt 100% through all that. I saw a lot of speculation that I got in the sprint car and felt bad, and that's when I knew, and, and that wasn't the case at all. I felt fine through that, and that actually reinforced me being like, oh, nothing's wrong, I'm fine. Um, but then staring at a computer screen for a couple hours on Wednesday um, made it pretty obvious that something was up. And, and finally, have you touched base with Kurt at all? Have you guys compared you know, what you guys have experienced since you know, we have two major stars, playoff drivers that are on the sidelines? Yeah, definitely. I've talked to Kurt a lot. Um, you know, a lot of the guys throughout the garage have been super helpful. Um, and, and, and that's been really cool. Uh, you know, whether it's Kurt or Jeff Burton, obviously I've talked to Dale a lot. Um, Kevin Harvick actually reached out a lot throughout the process and, and was really cool. So it was cool to see the support from, you know, the rest of the drivers. And obviously we don't want to see any of our peers in this situation. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot to be learned from everything that's happened. And, um, you know, hopefully nobody else has to go through it. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more, and we'll uh, wrap it with Jermaine. Well, Alex, uh, this is uh, Jermaine Farrell, WFXR in Roanoke. I just want to tell you, first of all, congratulations on your recovery. Thanks. And um, I guess one major question, obviously with the next-gen car, you know, and your experience with it, with the concussions, what do you feel could be done to, you know, to limit that happening in the next-gen car from other drivers? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad there's people a whole lot smarter than me uh, to make those decisions. But I think, you know, you got to learn from the experiences, right? Uh, whether it's mine and Kurt's crashes or all the other crashes throughout the year, the crash testing that they've done, obviously there are changes that are going to be made over the off season. Um, you know, we, I, I feel like, uh, obviously this wasn't expected when they designed the, the next gen car, right? Like it wasn't like, NASCAR would be like, oh, it's it's going to be fine, and it not been fine. It, it was just unexpected, and um, you know, there's a lot of really smart people working on on making it better. So, I think the communication between NASCAR and the teams and the drivers has gotten better. I haven't been at the racetrack until now, but there have been a lot of driver meetings with NASCAR, 
Um, so that I think is a good thing. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's going to be improvements made. I don't think safety ever ends, right? Like it's always an evolving thing. So, um, hopefully we'll get to a point where, uh, where we're, we're better than where we are today.